Good evening everybody and welcome to Runs Wickets Overs. Um, hopefully you can both hear me and see me now. Um, give me a, a, a hello in the chat window if you can hear me. Uh, apologies we have had um, a couple of technical difficulties but we believe that we're running live now so uh, do give me a shout as long as you can hear me. Uh, that's good actually, it says I'm live in the window now. So, welcome to tonight's session on using the Duckworth Lewis calculator within the Play Cricket Scorer app. <laughs> Who says turn the shirt down? Thank you very much. Well, an explanation of the shirt, actually, before we talk Duckworth Lewis. So that does mean that you can see me. Um, so uh, the shirt is a Vanuatu playing shirt, and I'm wearing it tonight in celebration that tomorrow Vanuatu are starting their Vanuatu T10 Blast competition. There are three teams playing in it and as far as I'm aware they will be the only cricket being played uh, around the world at the moment. So I thought that was a real celebration so I wore my Vanuatu shirt tonight. So thank you all for waiting. Uh, we have had one or two difficulties but we're up and running now. So I hope that you've all managed to uh, get yourself a copy of the Play Cricket Scorer app on a phone or a tablet, it doesn't matter which. It's on iOS and it's on Android, and again, doesn't matter which. So we've moved away from PCS Pro today uh, to look at the app. So the Duckworth Lewis that's in the app is the standard version. And uh, those of you who did our DLS session um, a few weeks ago will remember that there are two different types of Duckworth Lewis. Um, Luke, could you put the slide up with the types on, please? So we've got we've got Duckworth Lewis uh, standard and DLS professional. And the Duckworth Lewis standard is the one that we are talking about tonight. And that is the only one that is available within this app. You can only do DL standard within this app. And DL standard used to be done with a whole set of tables, uh, usually a calculator and a lot of maths. And those tables, for anybody who's interested, are still available. Um, I think Luke can put up a picture of the tables actually as well, uh, hopefully in a minute. Um, so those tables, uh, the ones that we're showing you are the over by over tables um, and they are available from the ICC's website. You can get both the over by over and the ball by ball tables. But the good people um, responsible for the Play Cricket Scorer app have given us a calculator to to do those calculations for us because um, you do need to be a little bit of a maths wizard to operate those tables. For those of you old enough to remember a slide rule, it's a little bit like that. Um, so we won't need to do um, much maths tonight. We'll need to do a tiny little bit, but, but not much. Those tables were last updated in 2013 and they won't be updated again uh, because after 2013 Duckworth Lewis changed into the professional version it added the S for Professor Stern who now creates the software that we use to drive that independently so DL Standard stopped being updated in 2013 but what that means is that it's not being, or the targets are not being pushed higher and higher as the, the scores in the professional game go higher and higher. So DL standard is probably more realistic to be used in league cricket. Now, if you look at the tables, you will see that they count down from 50 overs. And DL standard is based on 50 overs 
And if you are playing fewer than 50 overs, so maybe you have a league match which is 45 overs or 40, or maybe you're playing a T20, then you have to reduce the overs at the start of the game. Um, so because everything is based on a 50 over match. So it's one set of tables. Don't go looking for, well, these are the 50 over tables. Where's the 20 over tables? You won't find them. It's a one size fits all table um, based on the 50 over match. And that's, that's probably one of the most important things to remember. So at the start, when we, when we look at this app in a moment, when we start using it, you have to think, how many overs is my match? And I'm going to reduce the overs from 50 to that number before you start. And if you don't do that, you're going to get some uh, different targets or some incorrect targets created. And it's really important to make sure that everybody in your competition is using the same version of uh, Duckworth Lewis. So I'm dropping the S because we're talking standard here today, but you need to make sure that everybody is on the standard version. There is only one, one version of the standard version, so you don't need to worry, is this version two, is this 2013, who's got what? If they're using standard, it's all the same. But in your competition, you must make sure that everyone uses standard. Because if you've got two scorers using, one using standard, one using professional, they will produce different target scores in the same scenario. Now, before we actually open up the tool and start to look at um, how you use it, I want to talk about something called the G50. And the G50 is um, a variable that is used within the calculations. And we don't need to worry about how it's used. Um, I don't know what the algorithms are. Um, I probably wouldn't understand them if I did know what they were. Um, we just need to know that it uses this figure called the G50. So that's like using X in an equation, a simultaneous equation or anything else like that. So we're going to substitute a value for G50 wherever it is used. So when we open up this um, software, one of the first things that it's going to ask us is, what value do you want to use for the G50? And the G50 represents the average runs scored in an uninterrupted 50 over innings in your competition. So strictly speaking, if a league or a competition decides they are going to use um, DL standard, they ought to do some statistical work beforehand to find out what is a typical 50 over score in an, or a typical score in a 50 over match that has been uninterrupted. If you don't want to do all that work, then at the time that um, DL turned into to DLS, the default G50 in the professional game was 245. So that is the standard that is used normally within DL standard. So you can either use the 245 in a men's game or you can, as I say, do some investigation and work out your own. And actually, this is a great time to do it because there's not much cricket being played. So if there are some statisticians out there who'd like to help your league, then um, go back as far as you can and work out what an average score would be for 50 overs um, uninterrupted. Now, if your competition plays 40 overs or 20 overs, you've still got to extrapolate that into what the score would be in a 50 over match because DL standard is based on 50 overs. 
The recommendation uh, back in 2013, when the men's game were using 245 as their G50, the recommendation for a women's professional match or a youth match such as um, under 19s, so England under 19s, those sort of teams, they used 200 instead of 245. So we'll take a look now at how you actually use the app. The screen looks slightly different depending on whether you are using a tablet or a phone. And I'm using an iPad today. Um, so if you're using a phone, you might find that some of the buttons um, have slightly different titles because they will reduce the wording on the phone screen uh, to make it fit on but the buttons should still be in the same place and they should still um, function in the same way. Um, so I don't know whether you can see my screen or not yet. Um, You're on the iPad. Yes, uh, so Luke's going to switch me over to the iPad now so that you can see that. And you need to be on this screen that I'm on, which will probably have your email address and your password in it. Mine. Um, doesn't have it we've removed it for today because what we need to get at is the button at the very bottom center that says tools now if you've used play cricket scorer to score before or even for the the calculator before you may well have logged in in which case you will be looking at a screen that's called select a site and you will see a list of cricket clubs that you can be the scorer for. And if that's the screen you're looking at, touch cancel, which is up in the top left corner, and it will take you back to this screen. When you're back at this screen, um, you need to touch tools and then from the pop up menu, DL calculator. You can see now why I described the G50 before we started, because the very first thing it asks you is to select a G50 value. Now, if anybody has used this before, the ability to customise the G50 is a new feature. There was um, a, quite a big upgrade to the Play Cricket Scorer app two months ago, and one of those um, main updates was to add the ability to customise a G50. So last season, you were just stuck at using 245, no matter what type of cricket you were playing. So today, you can either use 245, the recommended for a men's professional, 200 for a women's, or you can touch custom, and then you can amend um, the box to lower or increase the target. So if I want to, I could set that to 250 and press done. When I do that, it then takes me into the calculator and it tells me towards the top right of the screen that um, it, I'm using a G50 value of 250. I cannot amend it when I'm within the calculator. If I've got it wrong or forgotten to change it, I have to click on cancel, come right out of the calculator and start again. The top line of the DL calculator on the left side has a, an area for entering how many overs per innings. And because DL standard is based on a 50 over game, it will always say 50 overs at the start. And that's where, if you want to change it, you can change this to be um, a different value. So if you're playing 20 overs, you will change it to 20 or 45 or whatever the overs are for your match regulations. You cannot push it higher than 50 because DL standard is based on a 50 over game and DL standard um, I won't say is finished with now but the professional game has moved on to using DLS professional so therefore DL standard 
is used really in um, league matches or recreational games and as a backup to some tournaments, um, certainly ICC ones, there's often a regulation that says if all else fails, if you can't do DLS professional, then you have to do DL standard. But it's unlikely ever to be updated, so we are stuck with a maximum number of overs as 50. So to add an interval, so for those of you that have joined us, I'm assuming, possibly wrongly, that you understand that um, the DL calculator is going to give you a new target score in an interrupted game. And we normally think of an interrupted game as rain or bad light, but equally it could be, um, and I think I saw Paul Dean say today, um, sun stop play. So yes, it could be sun um, that's, that's shining um, in the batsman's eyes and you can't play until the sun's moved or, or um, a sight screen's been moved. So it could be an interruption for anything. So to add an interruption, in this calculator, it's called a suspension period. So you have a line towards the bottom of the screen that says suspension periods and you click on that or you touch that line and it will show you all the suspension periods that you've added so far and we haven't added one yet so therefore there are none visible but we still need to click on new suspension period which will open up a box asking for the pertinent information. So you need to enter the current state of play at the start of the suspension. So when did they go off the field of play? So I'm going to put in an example. I'm going to put 20.4. Just to sort of say to you that you can put in parts of overs and if you are going to put in parts of overs you put in the ball as if it was a decimal so this is 20 overs and four balls so what is um, the total at 20.4 overs i'm going to make up something like 163 how many wickets have the team lost let's have two and how many overs are available after the suspension? Now, when they go off the field of play, you don't know that. So you can fill this out if you want to at the start when they go off, but you can't complete the last box until they are about to go back on. And hopefully the umpires will have advised you how many overs have been lost. Now, you have to do a little bit of maths at this point because the box is asking for how many overs remain after the suspension. So we had a 50 over match at the start and we've bowled 20.4 overs. So in my maths, that means that 29.2 remain before you lost any overs so just a straight 50 overs how many have we bowled so far 20.4 so at, when they came off the field of play you had 29.2 overs left so if the umpires tell you we're going to start in five minutes time and we will have lost five overs you take your 29.5 remaining and deduct however many overs you've lost which is five giving you a total again in my maths do correct me in the chat window if you disagree with me of 24.2 you have to remember back to um your school school exam days where we were always told um and they labored the point to read the question so we're not putting in here how many overs we've lost we're not putting in here um, the overs that we've got to. Um, we have to do our maths and say, how many did we start with? How many have we bowled? How many have we lost? This is how many we have remaining. And when you've put that in, you press done. So it's removed five overs. 
Our overs per innings on the top line is now greyed out. It remains showing 50, but it's greyed out because we have lost five. And in the centre of the screen, it has batting team one showing 45 um, overs. Because we're using the calculator, independent of scoring, it really doesn't matter who batting team one is. The software merely identifies them as team one and team two. And there is no target score to be created at this stage because the first innings is not complete. So you cannot get a new target score until the first innings has been finished. So if there were no further suspension periods, then we can just enter a figure at the end of the innings. So I touch the runs box, you can see the headings in grey above that box. I touch the runs box and I'm going to put in the fact that the team scored 205 off their 45 overs. To see the new target score, I have to touch the second innings tab which is in grey towards the top of the screen. So I'm touching the second innings and you can see that it has created a target score of 211 of 45 overs. So although team one scored 205, team two have a higher target to go for. Um, mainly because um, overs were lost towards the end of the innings. Now, with Duckworth Lewis standard, you don't normally produce a table of par scores. Those of you who are used to operating DLS professional would in, in the interval between innings would produce a par scores table which shows you um, an indication of where the team should be at the end of every over dependent on how many wickets they may have lost and teams like to see that so that they know where they are but DL standard was based on manual calculations so therefore you didn't produce this table because you're not going to sit there and do 50 what if or even more if you're going to do one for each um, possible wicket lost. You're not going to sit there and manually work those out. So you don't usually get a par scores table with DL standard. But this app does actually give you um, a par score if you choose an over. It won't give you the table. But if you wanted to update your scoreboard with the par score, you will need to tell it which over. So if I put in over one, it then says my par score is two. So if no wickets have been lost at the end of over one, the team should be on two to be on target. Now, I'm not suggesting that scorers should be doing this. I am merely telling you how the software works. If I were scoring with this manually, I would not want to run out at the end of every over. I would not first of all want to do this and then run out at the end of every over and hang a new number on a nail or even type things in um, on an electronic console. But it's there if you want it. The end of the over is a scorer's busiest time. Um, you also, if you are going to be displaying it on a scoreboard, you should be updating it when a wicket falls. So if you are part of the way through over one and a wicket falls, if I put one in the wickets box, you will see that the, the par score has jumped up to uh, 14. And when a wicket falls is also a really busy time for a scorer. So once again, I probably wouldn't want to do this manually. 
If you are going to be displaying um, past scores every over on an electronic scoreboard, then I would recommend that um, you have some way of doing it uh, automatically. Uh, maybe using PCS Pro, maybe have somebody else doing it. I can see in the chat window, um, Sebastian has said the DLMM should be dealing with the past score in the scoreboard. That is that is correct. Um, the DLMM, for those who don't know, is a Duckworth Lewis match manager. And for every game that is operating Duckworth Lewis, be it standard or professional, um, there should be a Duckworth Lewis match manager, and that shouldn't really be the scorer. Now, in league cricket, um, you're probably lucky to get two scorers, um, let alone a DLMM. But um, the software has the ability to produce a pass score should you want it, and should you have a Duckworth Lewis match manager who could be updating the board. So this is the basic principle um, for adding suspensions and it's very simple if you want to add another one you simply touch the suspension period line and keep adding them and the best way for us to um, to get to use it is to try some examples uh, so that's what we're going to do I have some worked examples and I will work through them fairly slowly and if you work through them with me um, I have Done them manually I've also put them through a couple of different pieces of software so I'm fairly confident in the answers that I'm expecting so you have at the top of the calculator a clear button and if you get yourself in a, in a bit of a pickle if you think you've added something in wrong just simply touch the clear button and start again it takes you to the beginning of the calculator but not back to where you can amend the G50. But in our first um, example, we are going to have a G50 of 250. So you can see hopefully now our example of the match on the screen. And um, we'll take that down in a minute when I start to touch the buttons. But you may just want to jot down those figures because it might help you to remember um, what we're going to be doing. So it is a 50 over match and our G50 value is the default 245. So actually, before we go any further, I'm going to um, cancel my calculator and start at the very beginning again so that I can change my uh, my g50 back to 245 so this time i'm going to accept the default the men's match default of 245 and then touch done so in our sample one team one are 114 for five of 27 overs when they go off for rain they're in the first innings. Seven overs are lost off each team, off each team's innings. Two's target score is. And really, that's what you all you need to be displaying on your scoreboard. You don't necessarily need to put the pass score up every over, but you do need to be displaying the, the target score in this situation. So... We have an interruption in the first innings. So we leave our 50 overs at the top. We touch suspension periods and then new suspension period. This happened at 27 overs. So at over 27, team one had scored 114 and they had lost five wickets. When the umpire tells you that we're going back out and we've lost seven overs off each, put in seven that we've lost, we need to work out the overs remaining. So it was started as a 50 over match. We've bowled 27, so therefore there were 23 remaining. 
but we've lost seven to the weather, which means there are 16 remaining at this point. So I need to put in 16 and then press done. And now you can see in the center of the screen, it has reduced um, team one to, a, to 43 overs in their innings. So there are no further interruptions. I'm going to touch the runs box for the end of the innings and put in team one's final score of 240. To see the new target score, it reduced the target score for team two. In our sample in the first one, um, it increased it. But in this case, it has reduced it to 238. I'm just having a look um, at some of the comments in the window. Um, to, and somebody says that they can uh, type in the G50 without, without exiting. So I'll try that in a moment. I'll try that when we start the new game. Um, and that may well be a new feature. Yes, I was going to say it is worth reiterating what was said at the start, um, that this is a, a recent-ish update. So if you haven't updated in the last couple of months, there might be some small differences in the way the app works. Um, I can also see that Richard has said maybe in future updates the overs remaining could be changed to overs lost. Um, it would certainly help scorers um, put it in the right um, value, I agree with that. Um, but the only way that you'll get that to happen is to ask the Play Cricket help desk people. So if you put in a request to the Play Cricket help desk, um, they won't necessarily do it if one person asks, but if enough people ask, um, then they will consider it and they will pass it through to uh, the developers to um, consider it for future updates. Um, now, it, it's worth mentioning that this particular software is uh, created by a different development team to the laptop version of Play Cricket Score a Professional. They are two completely separate packages. They are developed by two completely separate companies. Um, so uh, you would need to apply to the Play Cricket support desk um, and ask them to get that changed in the app. So in example, Two now we're going to start a different match that's that's a very simple um, entry or, or, or it's a very simple scenario to start off with uh, before I move on Paul Dean said I see you don't add the number of wickets at the end of the first innings um, no because the number of wickets that you've lost at the end of an innings is irrelevant all they're interested in is the final total and it doesn't matter either if you didn't bat out the 45 or sorry, the 43 overs. Um, you just have a final total for innings one. So I'm going to click on clear um, because I want to start a new game. Now I can't, I can't amend my G50. Not from there. So I don't know how uh, some of you are doing that. I will play with that after this session. <laughs> right. Example two. It's once again um, a 50 over match. And we have a G50 of 245. But this time we have rain happening before the start of play. So the, the game is reduced by 10 overs per side before play starts. So we just need to enter that in and then make sure that we get in the correct target at the end of the first innings. So in our first, um, in our first innings, the team scored 180 of their allocated 40 overs. Now, it, it, it is still a 50 over game. 
So you should put the loss of those 10 overs in as a suspension period and not as a reduced number of overs. If the match regulations say you're playing a 40 over game, then yes, you do change the overs per innings, but you should put it in as a suspension period. So I'm touching suspension period, new suspension period, and because it's at the start, we can leave the first three boxes blank. And I'm then going to touch overs remaining, and this one's easy, we can all work that one out very simply. It was 50 overs, it's now 40 overs per side, so that's what's remaining, and press done. So at the end of this um, first innings, team one scored 180. We need to touch that second innings tab to see the target score, and as you would expect, Team 2 just need to score 181, one more than Team 1, because Team 1 knew all the way through that they were batting 40 overs, as do Team 2. So it isn't, it hasn't given us any different value than if we'd reduced the match to 40 overs at the start. Um, but we have done it correctly. You should put it in as a suspension period. So don't clear the screen. Our scenario two continues um, with the same game. So we're going to have a suspension period now in the second innings. So team two, after 31 overs, are 150 for six. When we have some bad weather and we lose four overs of play. So we're going to put suspension period in. Just make sure that you touched, uh, let me cancel that, the second innings first. We touched second innings to go there to see the target score. So this means that our suspension period relates to the second innings. Now we put a, a suspension period in, in the first innings. We can't see that one now because that one relates to the first innings. So we're putting a whole new one in for the second innings. So at over 31, the score is 150. Wickets lost are six. And now we need to do our bit of maths. So it was a 50 over game, but we lost 10 at the start. So it became a 40 overs. Of those 40 overs, we have bowled 31 of them. So without the suspension, we had nine remaining. But the umpires have told us we are losing four overs. So therefore, there are five remaining in the game. And this is the most confusing bit. So I'm just going to go through that again as to how I got to five. So we started with 50 overs. We lost 10 at the start to rain, which brought it down to 40. We bowled 31 of those 40. Nine were remaining. We've lost four to bad weather. There are five remaining. So type five in overs remaining. Press done. And it now says that Team 2's target score is 166 off 36 overs. So they were on 150. They need a further 16 off um, the remaining 3.2 overs. And it's automatically given us the par score for the over that we're in because we said we'd got to um, 31 overs, so it's telling us I'd actually want the pass score for over 32 to put on the board. You always put it up one ahead. Um, I find the software easy to use, but I would like to see um, Team 1's 
total somewhere. I need to flick back. You'd have to flick back to the first innings um, to see the score. Um, and now you can't see what team two have scored. Um, we know what the target score is. So this is merely a calculator. You would need to use it in conjunction with your scoreboard to work out, well, that's given me a new target score, actually. How many how many more do we need? Well, it's 16 off, um, a further 16 off, sorry, the remaining five overs, and it's 3.2 and over, not the remaining 3.2 overs. Um, that's that scenario. Just before we move on, I just want to have a look and see if we've got any questions. Um, Andy says you can only tap on the G50 if you're using a custom value other than 245. That would explain it. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's that's useful. Thank you for doing that. Um, I don't think we've got any other questions uh, on this scenario. I haven't found any questions that you haven't already answered. Um, Excellent. In that case, we'll move on to um, our third scenario. Now... This is a slightly more complicated one. So first of all, I'm going to press clear to get rid of everything on the screen. And we'll put the scenario up and just read through it for a few moments and think about it. So first of all, it's a 45 over match. So we are going to have to change the number of overs at the start. And we've got a G50 of 240. That is nothing to do with the fact that it's five overs fewer. It's not, we haven't reduced the G50 because it's a 45 over game. This competition, whichever one this, this fictional game is in, um, has decided that their average score for 50 overs would be 240. We have no interruptions um, in the first innings and team one uh, they're, they're scoring as per average they score those 240 runs for eight of the 45 overs but we have a very rainy afternoon and in the second innings we have three interruptions I'll mention them now, but don't worry, I will go through each one as we put them in. So, after 12 overs, team two are 40 for one, and you lose 10 overs of the game. They go back on and play for a bit longer, play for another 10 overs, and um, you get rain again. So at 22 overs, Team two have managed to get to 98 for three when there's just a very short break and you lose a further two overs. Uh, they go back out and play on for another eight overs or so. And in the middle of, of an over at 30.2 overs, they come off and it's 154 for six, but there's just been too much rain that afternoon. You're not going to get back on and the match is abandoned. And the way that you would abandon a game in the calculator is merely to set the overs remaining to zero. You don't have to enter any particular um, letter or say it's abandoned. You just set the overs remaining to zero and the calculator will know that the match has been abandoned. So we're going to go through now and take those scenarios one by one. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually to cancel the calculator because I need to change the G50. So I'm going to touch cancel and innings. So you can get to the end of that first innings and in team one's runs box of 45 overs, they score their average score of 240. So I touch second innings and it quite rightly says you need 241 to win. That's what you'd all expect with no interruption in the first innings. So touch six suspension periods, new suspension period to add the first one in. So our first one came at 12 overs, 
when the team were 40 for 1. So at over 12, runs 40, wickets lost 1. Now comes our maths. The umpires tell us we've lost 10 overs. So it's a 45 over game of which 12 have been bowled. So before they came off, there were 33 overs remaining. We have lost 10 overs. So therefore there are 23 overs remaining. Touch done and it gives me a new target score of 201 of 35 overs. Now remember we're using this independently so you can leave the calculator open just leave it there and don't touch anything else until uh, you come to the second suspension. So we're going to now touch suspension period again to add the second one in. And you will see that it lists suspension one at the top. If you'd typed things in incorrectly, you could just edit them and press done. But that was a valid suspension. We need to add another. So be careful not to edit any of those fields, but press new suspension period and it will appear below the other one, all of which are open and could be edited, or could be removed by clicking on the red cross in the top right corner of that particular section. So this second suspension, and I'll just scroll that screen so that you can see it above my keyboard. The second suspension came after 22 overs. So you don't need to worry about overs remaining at this point, just put the exact state of play in. 22 overs have been bowled, 98 runs have been scored, and three wickets lost. Again, that's not a further 98. This is the state of play at this moment in time. But we do need to work out our overs remaining, taking into account both suspensions. So, we started with 45 overs. We have bowled 22 of them. So that's sort of adding or rolling on from the first one. So 45 overs minus 22 makes 23 remaining. We lost 10 in the first suspension. So that's 13 remaining. And in this suspension, we're going to lose a further two, which gives me 11 remaining. So once again, I'm just going to go back through that. So 45 over game, we've bowled 22 of them, which give me 23 left. We lost 10 in the first innings, or sorry, 10 in the first suspension period. We're losing another two in this suspension period. So we're taking off 12 overs lost, giving me 11 remaining in the game. So when I touch done, my new target score is 190 off 33 overs. That's not another further 33 overs, that's overall. So at the moment we are, team two is 98 off 22. They need to get to 190 off 33. That's quite a big task. So they start to play again, get a bit further on and it rains yet again. So we go into suspension periods. Don't touch the first two, touch new suspension period and touch the box for overs in suspension period three. It happens at 30 overs and two balls, 30.2. The runs scored are 154. The wickets lost are six. And overs remaining, we don't need to do any maths quite thankfully, because the match has been abandoned. 
so therefore our overs remaining are zero. We just press done and it gives us a target score at this point in time. It hasn't projected further because we set overs remaining to be zero. So it's saying that our target score for, for 30.2 overs is 169. Now, it doesn't actually tell us who's won. It does not calculate a result for us. But we have to then go back to what did team two score? And what did team one score actually as well? So team two at the moment have scored 154 for six. Their target was 169, but we've, they've played enough overs for it to constitute a game. So therefore they have fallen short of their target. 154 is fewer than 159. So therefore they have lost. So therefore team one win, and you have to go back to team one's score no, you don't. You have to work out the difference. I do apologise. You have to work out the difference between um, what team two should have scored, which was 169. They've fallen short by uh, actually 14 runs because team one, it's not the 15, they needed 15 to win. But team one actually win by 14 runs on DL method. So if you're writing that down, or submitting it to a league, you should be advising them that it is a win under DL. But sadly, the calculator doesn't do that for us. So that was a more complex scenario, but the principle is the same. We have a suspension period window and you just type whatever the suspension period is in there, whatever the state of play is at that time. So it's actually quite simple to use as long as you can calculate the overs remaining. You can get at the calculator and use it um, in, a, in a slightly more helpful way if you are scoring with the software. And just before we finish the session, I'm going to very quickly show you how to do that. Before I do, I just again want to check that um, we do, there aren't any other questions. So we've got the one from Andrew Lowen that's just come in. Uh, 189 is where they needed to be at the end of over 31. Um, that was um, in the past score window when um, you had a higher number of overs available to you. But when you get to um, abandon a match, it doesn't update the past score um, on that bottom line. So it was showing you 189, but um, it was irrelevant because um, 169 is the target score. It is a little confusing when you're looking at that and seeing 189. Um, but uh, no, that was that was what was projected for, you're right, over 31, but it's irrelevant now the match has been abandoned. What is the 189? <laughs> um, so Nigel has asked, what is the 189? That is a pass score. So um, I, I tried to explain pass scores earlier. I don't know whether you were in on the session at that point. But a pass score is where a team should be at the end of any given over if they are going to be on track to meet the target score. So you can say, you can type in any over number and say, where do we need to be at the end of this over um, if we had lost this amount of wickets? So you've got, a, you've got an overs box and a wickets box. And it will tell you where you need to be to be on track at the end of that over. OK, so it was coming up with a pass score for where we were um, every time we put a suspension period in. But it's irrelevant when you abandon the match. So as soon as you put in a, a um, zero as overs remaining, unfortunately, it doesn't wipe that out. So it does look a little confusing. You just need to ignore it. OK, the, all you can be interested in when you've abandoned a game is what was the target score 
did the side bat in second meet that target? Not a question, but uh, I'll read out Clive Jones's uh, just worth mentioning. If team one are all out in less than the overs allocated, then it is assumed their score was off the full allocation, minus any deductions or suspensions. Do you have anything to add? No, Clive is correct. Um, the the number of overs that a team bats in the first innings, as far as the, the DL is concerned, um, is irrelevant. If they were allocated 45 overs and there was no interruption, if they didn't manage to bat 45 overs, then that's just their hard luck. Everything, all the calculations are, are based on an assumption that they were allowed to have 45 overs. So, Tim, uh, so Clive, yes, you're quite right. Tim's asking, um, <laughs> can you explain again how you worked out who won? With difficulty, Tim, <laughs> because we haven't got the scores on this screen. This is a Duckworth Lewis calculator. All it's doing is calculating a target score. You need to use it in conjunction with your scorer, so um, which may be the Duckworth Lewis match manager as well. So at this point when the match was abandoned, the calculator is telling me that team two need to have scored 169 to win. I have to go back to my scorer or look at the scoreboard to see how many had they scored. And actually, if I touch suspension periods um, and scroll back down, you can see that we we put in the fact that they'd scored 154 for six. The six wickets, now that the, the match is abandoned, is irrelevant. They'd scored 154. They, sh they needed to have scored 169 to win. So therefore, they have lost. They did not meet the new target score. They fell short by 14 runs. They, well, they fell short by 15 runs, which means that team won, won by 14 runs because they scored 14 runs uh, effectively more than team two. So, Polly, <laughs> uh, I think Luke was just about to mention Polly. Hello, Polly, by the way. It's good to see, good to hear from you. Um, it's also worth stating that if there is one suspension, it will give a different pass score in some cases where there are three stoppages, even though both give a total of overs lost. Yes, do not roll up your stoppages. Um, always enter them as separate items. They will give you... Um, different values or different target score you can't say we came off um, we came off three times and overall we've lost this amount of overs so you can't say at the end if I touch my suspension periods again you can't just say well um, we got to the end um, uh, of 30.2 overs and we lost this amount of overs you must put each suspension period in separately it's really important to do that. So thank you, Polly. That is a very important point. So I'm going to move on now because we, we're coming close to the end of our session. And I'm very quickly going to show you how to get into the calculator when you're scoring. I'm not going to do very much scoring with the app. This is not a session on how to score with Play Cricket Scorer. If you want to, you can try and follow me, but I'm going to go through the scoring part really quickly, just so that I can get at the calculator. So I'm going to come out, I'm going to click on cancel, and I'm going to use the demo match. And maybe it is worth just, just noting that if you've got the, well, you all will have now uh, the PCS app. If you touch other matches, you have something on that menu called demo match. And it's, a, it's there for practice to save you from having to create teams and to create a match. And it's based on last year's T20 final, in which I'm very pleased to say, I was the scorer, one of the scorers, um, Worcestershire played Essex. So it's set up with the, the two teams that played on the day with those players. I am just going to turn off the wagon wheel because I don't want to be doing wagon wheels, I just want to get into the calculator. 
In the match settings below, you can see that it's set to a T20 uh, maximum overs per bowler four, but we're not going to worry about all our match setup at the moment. I'm going to say Worcester Rapids won the toss and decided to bat. Um, and I'm going to score ball by ball. I'm just going to select whoever comes to the top of the list as the opening batsman and uh, Ravi Bapara can open the bowl then. Okay, whoever, if you're following me, whoever you choose, it's irrelevant. Um, I'm going to score just a little bit. I'm going to do dot one, dot two, just so that we've got something on the board before it rains. So to get into Duckworth Lewis from within the scoring side of things, you have a big button at the bottom that says match actions. It's in that bottom row um, to the right of all the extras buttons. If you're scoring on a phone, it will just say actions. But on the iPad or a tablet, it will say match actions. I touch match actions and it's got Duckworth Lewis on the menu and it's a toggle on or off. So at the moment, the fact that we're using Duckworth Lewis is off. I need to touch Duckworth Lewis standard to turn it on and then done. You cannot pre-select it in the match setup. It was not available in that screen. So you have to go in and you can go in there at any time. You could do it at, at ball one if you wanted to. And then it goes through the same thing that we've seen when we used it independently. So we set our G50, so that's fine. I can go to accept 245 um, as the G50. And it then completes the information for me. So that's one of the big benefits of using it while you're scoring. Now, suspension period, new suspension period, it fills much of it out for me. So it tells me I've bowled 0.4 overs, three runs, no wickets lost, 19.2 remaining. That's great. I haven't had to work that one out at all. Um, and so if the umpires then say you've lost five overs, it's great. I can just say, OK, I'm going to take my 19.2 and deduct five and do 14.2. Done. And you can then see that it has reduced this to a 15 over innings because I said five overs were lost. The calculator works in exactly the same way. If I score long enough to get to the end of that innings, it will create a new target score for me when I touch second innings. So I don't need really to show you the calculator again. You've seen how to operate the calculator. It's just a question of how you get into it um, from within the scoring menu. So it's match actions, DL, um, Duckworth Lewis was on the menu. Um, and then it will bring all the totals through for you. So I know that um, this app is used by a lot of leagues um, because not all their scorers um, are scoring electronically. So they won't all have access um, to Duckworth Lewis Stern within um, PCS Pro. They're not all using um, this app to score. But you, as you've seen with this software, um, doing the Duckworth Lewis calculations. So if there are no more questions, <laughs> um, I'd like to say thank you very much. Uh, it's been a beautiful app. There hasn't been anything uh, so far, but just while we give people a second to get their questions in, I'll take this opportunity to once again uh, remind people of your new podcast, Cricket Scorers Untallied. Uh, the second episode went up uh, on Monday, and that'll be a third one, I'm sure, going up next Monday. Uh, so, yeah, anybody who is wanting even more of a cricket fix, uh, you can find that podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and just about every other podcast provider you can find. Mm -hmm. Um, we are now starting to get some questions in so I will read out there is also a Duckworth Lewis button on the top section that wasn't really a question that was more of a statement oh um, there is um, Cl uh, is it Clive that said yes. that yes the top section um, can they still see the screen I can't see what's going on in this today 
Um, yes. So if you are within the score sheet, um, what Clive is referring to by the top section, I think um, you've got three little dots in the top right corner of the screen. And if you touch, uh, if you touch that, you can go to match status and uh, you can then get to the Duckworth Lewis calculator off that menu. Alison Bradnock asks, going back to the beginning, when working out the average score for calculating a League G50, how many matches is it best to calculate from? Two seasons? Three seasons? As many as possible. Um, when you are um, doing statistics, the bigger the sample, the more accurate it will be. But you should only really use a first innings um, and not the second innings because that gives you a truer average score because the team is not playing to any specific conditions in team in a second innings um, they they are batting maybe a reduced number of overs or they're batting to a specific target so it's the first innings of a match that gives you um, a truer figure for accuracy and that is backed up um, by the Duckworth Lewis book um, I was reading that earlier. That's where I got that from, actually. Um, so the Duckworth Lewis book written by um, Duckworth and Lewis. Um, so Frank Duckworth and Tony Lewis. And they recommend um, they recommend uh, that you should only use the first innings of a match when you are doing those statistics. Uh, the only other question we've had so far uh, well Clive has just come in with a, a reply to your previous one uh, saying look under where it says Worcester Royals and Essex Eagles yes uh, okay um, back to the screen in that case um, there is a line that says 86 balls remaining um, and the current runs per over is 4.5 you're quite right I forget that it's there there's a Duckworth Lewis calculator it only appears there after you've turned it on so you needed to have done your match actions and turned it on first. But once you've done that, yes, you can get into the calculator simply by touching Duckworth Lewis calculator in the middle of that screen. You're quite right. Well, so far, that is that seems to be it for questions. The only other thing that's been asked is uh, what's going on next week. But I guess you just have to uh, subscribe <laughs> and uh, <laughs> wait to <laughs> wait for the advert. Wait to, for us to decide. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I haven't decided. <laughs> um, so open to persuasion, maybe. Um, yeah, I've got a few ideas, but but we haven't finally decided what we're going to do next week yet. But there will be a next week, um, as long as as long as it's required, as long as people want it to be, there will be a next week. It's not exactly what's been asked, but um, Polly has pointed out. Polly Rhodes has pointed out that there's another book by Duckworth and Lewis about uh, how it's all developed. That's very interesting. But that does bring on a question from me: Is there are there more Duckworth Lewis resources that might be of interest to people? Other books or websites or apps or anything like that? It's not a loaded question, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I don't know the answer to that. There are, there are books that have been written by um, Frank Duckworth and Tony Lewis. And actually, if Polly would send me details of the book that she's talking about, I can put that into the Runs um, Wickets Overs Twitter feed so that you can see what that book is. Um, I can put a link in to, to show you that book. Um, so I'm sure that Polly can send that to me and I can I can do that that I don't know of a website for it the Duckworth Lewis Stern as it is now they have some explanations of how it works and they have the tables you can download the ball by ball and the over by over tables from there with an explanation of how it all works but I don't I don't think there's an official I've never seen an official DLS site Okay. So thank you all very much. Uh, thank you and good night. <laughs>